Right? So that's the corresponding action of the thermometer. We're going to be reading, first of all, from James, the first chapter. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 8. We're going to read verses 5. We're going to read verses 7, chapter 2, verses 14 through 1 through 6. That's the foundational text. It's actually for us, that's why we're still It's our foundational text. And I know I said a text had to be one script today. James 1 1, starting with the same servant of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes that scattered abroad. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trials of your faith work in patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and let him vote of none, and it shall be given to you. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers. It's like the waves of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. So let not that man think he shall do anything of the Lord. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Pretty close to stable faith. If you're unstable for some of you, you're unstable in all your ways, you're unstable in all your ways. Amen. Wherefore, we don't need verse 21 now. Wherefore, Lay apart all filthiness, and speak the purity of madness, and receive of meekness the blasted word which is able to save you in this one year. So that it doesn't mean get your soul born again. It means to restore and make sound of you so that your soul will make it. Okay, in this particular case, this is not a case where you have a translation so that it's restored or make or make sound. Okay, would not be saved in the sense of being born again. The soul doesn't get saved, the spirit does. The pneuma gets born again. The soul gets restored. Amen. You have to get a seed of meat to get the word to get saved from someone. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, but seeking your own self. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself, goeth his way. Straightway forget what man and man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and the law of what you say, notice that the Bible says that the word of God is the perfect law of liberty. So even when God's word says don't do something, that's liberty. It is the law, it is the perfect law of liberty. Even when there's a New Testament epistle written. Post resurrection and ascension of Jesus and Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father and the, and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the church and the church age, even when there's written scripture written by Paul and James and John and Peter that says not to do something, the Bible calls that the perfect law of liberty. Why? Because if you're bound by sin, you're not free. And you go contrary to what the Word says, it's not liberty, it's not freedom. So he said, what's the reason the perfect law of liberty and continuous in it? And he's not a, he being not a forgetful deal, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Let's jump into chapter 2, verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not work? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to him, Depart from thee, be warm and filled. Not with things, you give them not the things to me, but to the body. What does it profit us by thinking about that man? Here he talks about faith and work right now. I'm here. I'm thankful for things that stick too far down to me. Work sticks. I'm talking about the works of the Old Testament. I'm not talking about the Old Testament. I'm talking about how it corresponds to your faith. I confess your blessing. Be warm and filled and shut the door. What does the problem with them? Even so, the faith has not worked. You can have even, even to faith, it has not worked. It can't be what you need. 
do, and then you may say, I have faith and I have work. So you have faith without that work, so I'm going to be my faith by that my work. Do I believe that there is one God that I do? Well, can that be known? The devil also believes in faith. So what do I know on the man that faith without work is good? Was not Abraham my father justified by work when he offered Isaac to son from the altar? See it? Thou and how faith wrought with his work? And by work of faith made perfect. And the scripture is fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed to him for righteousness, and he was called the free of God. You see then that by work the man is justified, not by faith only. Likewise, also, is that not right to have the heart justified by work, that you receive the messenger and have been sent to you? And has sent them and out another way, for it's the body without the spirit of God, so faith without work is dead also. Okay. So the most of the is. A lot of people think, a lot of people think, and say, unless you write or go back to the Lord of the Lord. And the big difference, you know, there are people that take a long time to call and get into arguments or disagreement about the Word. Well, if you look at this particular thing, which is the Lord's work, and you just get a faith guy saying the same thing, the same thing, the same thing, the same thing, and yet it'll be in disagreement. But James thinks it's very clear that his work he was going to is not. He says, if you do that, Abraham, when you offer the plan to you, what's that not the work? It's what made you get to the good day. And it's not the good day. And it's not the good day. And what's not even our father judged by the work? By the work of Isaac, Isaac, the son of the other. So the Bible law he was working. He wasn't fulfilling the Bible law that he was saying. Was he? No. He had an action. Corresponding to faith. Paul, on the other hand, he even says it, that no one is no man is justified by the works of the law. Amen. So Paul, in, in reference to works, to what I mean, right, is that not the corresponding action? He's writing from a, from a, a Jewish mindset <coughs> that, that, that we are not justified by the works of the law. James, on the other hand, is speaking down. Not to be not, but not to be not. He's talking about some of these other people that are down. Some people say, you're a little unbelievable with your faith. That's not God. Okay? It's in the sweet and sour chicken. Right? So it's good on this salt. And my wife makes some of the best cookies you'll ever eat. And you know what she puts on it? She also sweetens it with salt. She goes, oh, her brain.
or just say the right to heart and you can take the altar call and just talk to him, pray with you, and lead you to the Lord. And, and, and as this, the next progression in, yes, I believe that, and, and, and doing it, he says, you believe that. Well, I'm going to prove to God that I believe it, but you know that I, that he wants me to die, that he wants to die, that he wants to die, and I'm afraid of putting that. He didn't think that, did he? What happened? Somebody says, if you believe you don't believe you can work on that good night, except maybe what you're doing on the call back to church. Well, you've got to be right down there. And you're going to do it because you believe that they're preaching and you want to be saved. See, it's the progression of the response of your faith. You respond to what you're afraid to say. We can do that joke like that at times. Jesus Christ is laying on it. And uh, he's talking about how the faith is our master. We are not the master of our faith. Faith is our master. They tell us what to do. We don't tell faith what to do. Your response is faith, you believe by faith, and then it tells you what to do. One with the issue of love. This was a bad question. It covered many things in many positions for 12 years. When she heard of Jesus, came in distress, especially when he was running. Well, she said it's weak that she said, get that faith. That's the second thing that happened. Faith came. And she responded to what she was saying, not to her yet. She began to go do it. She wasn't going, you know what? I'm going to act on my faith and see. And I understand she couldn't teach him to get to it. I understand they've got to act on that. We can get so caught up in the action that we're not letting faith govern the action. We'll think of the action to be the thing instead of the response to the result of the thing. I've seen people try to prove to you that they're in faith, but you need to be honest about their faith. Because they're forced to doubt it. They're forcing themselves to do something that they can do. I'm saying, hopefully, once I do this, this is going to look like that. I'm going to prove to everybody around me that they're proving God in the faith, and I'm going to be able to show faith and the power of my faith. So, what you feel is that the thing that faith is the result of the action. Whatever somebody else and not be in faith of somebody else is. And only you and God know the difference. That's what I'm asking you. You have to know in your heart that you do believe it. In other words, if you're trying to do it to, to convince yourself that you're in faith, then you're trying to tell your faith what to do instead of your faith telling you what to do. Either you believe or you don't. Spend more time in the presence of God. Spend more time in the Word. Get filled up on Him. Just know that. You know, obviously, Abraham was fully persuaded that what God had promised to him, Abraham, he performed. So when God said, Go out for your son, your only son, which I think I got to get to here in just a minute. Yeah. Let's go ahead over to Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 through 19. Says by faith when he was eight, when he was five, offered up Isaac. And he that received the promise of offered up his son on coming by God's son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting him for slave him. That God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he ought to receive him in a kingdom. Why? Let's just go down to Genesis. I'll read 14 verses of Genesis. You have my read 14 verses of Genesis? And it came to pass after this thing, Genesis 22, verse 1. I should tell you where I was going right now. Genesis 22, 1. 
to come to me. It came to pass after these things that God would get Abraham out of the tent of the I know that I was here, you know, that none of the children should be sent to God, God took the children of Eden. Some people to think. The word gifts here is used truth. Does not mean gifts as you try to get you to do something wrong. It's a different, it's a different meaning. Okay? Because it makes it very clear when it comes to the God's name and redemption. Uh, God sent some men, God sent some men to lead them. But now they're going to talk about alien skins and certain certain classes on the way they don't work. Okay? Here, God's got plans on the horse. He's proven it. He's getting to me. David told Saul he would not wear his armor because he would not see this. Amen? There's a lot of people who've heard a lot about faith and never seen it. Never worked it out. Got a lot of knowledge about it. Heard a lot of tapes and read all the bad movies and read all the great books and shit. Read all the great types and shit. Read all the stuff and shit. Got all those books. Read them all. Heard all the tapes and seen the videos and shit. Been to all the conferences. You know what? I've been to all the conferences. Been there. See the video, turn to the conference, and have my hands up and say, Amen. Any of that, all that, you should have a lot of knowledge about faith and never proved it. Let me say something. That's exactly what happened to Jesus when he was led after he was baptized in Jordan by, by John. The Bible says he came up and he said, God, come on, you sent it upon him. And the Bible came up the dove. This is not the best thing you know what to do. Next thing to and Jesus is led. Jesus, being full of the Spirit, was led in his will. He's been sent to the devil for 40 days to prove the honor of the Lord. And he overcame the lust of the flesh. And he overcame the lust of the eyes. And he overcame the pride of life. And the Bible says, right before he got back to the temple in Luke 4 18, it says, And Jesus returned, not full of the Spirit. Even in full, he came back with the power and proof that he could do it. He took the honor. Okay? Abraham has a promise from God. What? Then Isaac shall thy seed be. And God proved it. He's going to be the follower by faith. He's got to prove the honor. Amen? So God did step up through Abraham. He said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. He said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac. Whom thou lovest, and get thee to the land of Moriah, and I offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham raised up early in the morning. We didn't, we don't have an argument. We don't have God, you've got to be kidding. Oh God, man, it took me 25 years to receive and get the promise. Oh God, I mean, I tried to get you to take Ishmael, and you wouldn't take him, and now here I am, and you, and you want to take me, and, and uh, I'm an owner now. Actually, before he did he tried to get him to take the steward of his house. Abraham said, I'll offer that stuff. Finally got it right and got the promise. Now God comes up there, now let's sacrifice the thing. You see what he If you grow in faith, you learn. You need to learn faith. You can trust God. Now, God didn't kill his son. His wife to take some. He didn't give Abraham an answer for his son. He didn't give him a single son. I'm sorry, I get angry with, with people pushing other people's stuff, messing with their stuff. Get people coming along and getting messed up because people are telling them stupid stuff. God did prove Abraham, but he proved it by, by wanting to see what he would do when he told him to do something that was beyond the pale. Now, here is an irreverent thought of a thought process. God said, I'm going to bring the seed to your son who's had no children. Let me explain something to you for a second. Let me tell you this, folks. How do I reconcile the paradox here of the promise of God and the kill of the promise? 
and his children. A parent that God is able to raise them up in the front of the kids. Why? God didn't change the man about Isaac. Are y'all here to go home? Hallelujah. And so I made the bread in the morning, so I was asked to two of the young men with him. I had to return and pay the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went to the place uh, which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place of fire. And Abraham said to his young men, He's not making a faith confession in the sense he's trying to speak. Let me let me diverge just a tad bit here. When you're confessing the word that you don't believe, you know what I'm saying? Make your faith confession, but you really meditate on it. It's meditation, it's not confession. It sounds like a confession, but it's meditation. Do it the other way. In other words, if you're speaking it to believe, it's not perfection. It's meditation. And that's so the biblical. But let's get it straight. We confuse people. We say, well, that's a good confession. No. Make a good meditation. But the word meditate in the New Testament is the word that means to mud. Or not in the actual Bible, it means to mud. You mud. Everybody hit the front. Hit your finger with a hammer. Try to get something to work and it won't work and you'll just tell them, what's wrong with you? It's a joke. You're mothering. You mean to talk to you about it. And the Bible tells us to feed on the word and speak the word consistently to ourselves is mothering. It's meditation. Yet, the spirit of faith says, as it is written, we believe, therefore, we spoke and we also believe, and therefore speak. The spirit of faith is a confession of faith. It's speaking what we believe, not speaking to believe. Speaking to believe is meditation. Speaking what we believe is confession. Okay? They sound just alike. If Sarah was sitting here saying, and I believe for the Western people and for the Western people, we can do it. And she's meditating, do it in faith, don't get her to believe. It would sound like her five minutes later today. I believe that I receive my healing according to what Peter Peter went for. By the stripes I'm healed. The healer is the same thing. But the heart knows the difference. Even if your heart reaches for the mark that you receive, that's your action. Therefore, it's just a reach of it. Therefore, it's just a reach of it. Therefore, it's not. We got to really do that test. So you start to have a doubt. Start to doubt in your heart. Which I believe that faith and confession come against the law whatsoever fails. You got a lot of people who are trying to mimic confession with, in, and it's really meditation, but they're confused because we call them the same thing. And I have tried for years not to do that because I don't want people to confuse. I want you to understand that if you're speaking the word like in Joshua 1 8, the book, this book of the law should not be called out of that but that's what meditate therein, that you mud therein, day and night. That thou mayest go to do according to all that's written therein, when thou shalt make thy way far from him, and thou shalt be able It's the meditation of God's word. The psalmist says, the meditation of his word, that day you meditate for it day and night. And there's lots that the Bible about meditating. What? That's feeding on the word produces faith. But that feeding process. And you don't need to get to the end of that. I feel like you're blessed with a charismatic, Holy Ghost, Word of Faith, crazy, charismatic, charismatic, lunatic, Christian man, which I'm all of them. I've been all of them, but I'll see all of them. Pascal Pentecostal, Neo Pentecostal, Word of Faith Pentecostal, charismatic Pentecostal, Lean Looney Tune Pentecostal. I mean, I've been to all of them. I've, 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 gone, I've heard the gamut. I know what I'm talking about. 
thing, all right? I'm trying to tell you some stuff. I've learned some stuff along the way. You don't have to do the same thing when you've been messed up. All right? But we used to think we could do the improvement. We were just thinking it was perfection. But so what? John said something the first time that interested me in relation to sin. But it tells us the rule of the heart and our walk in the Spirit and walk with God. Brethren, if our heart condemns not, then have we confidence in God. How major of a role is the heart of man, the Spirit of man? Look at the heart of the Spirit of man. The fact that we're man. And that's what the church and the fact that we're man. That's what the church and the heart. I'm not talking about the whole thing. Jesus, God provided himself as the man. 
they come to the place that Scott told them of, and Abraham built an altar there and made the wood in order and bear it out. They said, yeah, they had for him. And then here comes Dad, the broker. Yeah. You said a lot of them were going to die to fight. Look what's going on for them. I just don't know about Fighting, fighting, that even kind of time. Really don't. He found him, 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 he found he said, Well, I'm not going to be able to allow you to do anything to him, for now I know. Because I've seen him. Now, I'm serious. God's going to die, but I'm not going to tell him about coming back home and coming to me. And Abraham looked at the back and looked, and behold, a ram behind him, a ram caught in the thicket of Babylon. And he went and took the ram, offered him up for a burnt offering in the shed of the stream. And Abraham named the place Peniel, because he had seen the Lord in the place of the Lord. And Abraham named the place Jehovah God of the Lord. Really, it's like W H E L. The four letters we don't have to pronounce. It's the Jehovah or Yahweh. Either, either one of those translations of those four letters is the, in the dramatic descent of translation of Jehovah. But you see, we've got new words that start putting Yahweh in the Bible. But it's, it's, it's the same, it's the same four letter, four constant word. Y H W H. Which is the covenant name of God. It's a name of the place. The Holy Year, as it is said to this day, in the mouth of the Lord is said to me, or, can be literally translated, the Lord is my provider, or the Lord makes provision. Amen? Okay. So here we have, notice back at the Hebrews, verse 13 of 11. That they made by him, and he's proud of the Bible. And he is, and he that has received the promise of God, I put up the only begotten from Hebrews, Jesus Christ. So, Abraham has received the promise. This is a he has received it. He's in faith. His actions are being governed by his faith. God said, Go off for a month. And 19 cups of flour. Uh, uh, once again, I think we're going to say that in Isaac, how about Satan called? God gave him a promise. He has received that promise. He's living his life in accordance with the promise of God that Isaac has received. Now, God comes along before Isaac is married and producing children. He says, Kill him. Come and offer to me. And Abraham says, Okay, and I'll just see the promise. I'm, I'm going to interject this. But this is the guy who said, Let's get that to me. I'll just see the promise. And the promise is not seen to the top of it. And Isaac's not like this. You promised me that. And you're telling me the offer's going to offer and burn it as a sacrifice. The only way your work can be fulfilled is that when I do that, I stay back and you come down on those axes and you raise him up from the dead. And so, and then I know what's going to be, I found that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from when he also received him in a sense. Abraham, before he had to get that mountain to make sacrifice, Life's confession of faith and all the meditation is confession of faith. And I know that I will come again to you. He had already received him. And that sacrifice, burnt in an offering, and God was raised him from the dead, and he came back down on the altar to God. He had received that word of faith. It was a word of faith. Why? Because God put him in an offering and only had a promise to be fulfilled in light of what God now has commanded. God had to raise him from the dead. So Abraham's faith was to the test back before God had raised him from the dead. There's no other way for it to happen. And he had fa- his faith had taken him through the process and received the resurrection of his son. Before he got out. And it was the eye of the Praise God. Amen. And now we have a covenant name of God. Jehovah 
Joshua, the judge of the The man written into the roof, and he let the man uh, the Lord issue a blood, and he talked about, um, oh, I don't have any court time to say that. You know, the model doesn't look like that. Court time now is the model, so court time now is the model doesn't look like that. Again, what happens is you do something with the Not actually decide to get into the world. You don't have to shoot in the court of faith out of your heart. You can't. Have you ever tried to make a face, quote, unquote, face and face? Only you don't believe that. And you do in your heart, you don't believe that. They don't believe you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I believe you. I believe you. You can't agree with me. I don't believe it myself. And this is not going to be the same. You can't have a love thing. And if you locate yourself and see that you're not, if you, if you hear in your own words come out of your mouth and your own heart saying, you don't believe it? Don't keep trying to act like you do. Go do something about it. Go get into the Word. Meditate on the Word. Think the Word. Feed on the Word. Until when you do say it, and it comes out your mouth and you're like, <laughs> Amen. You believe it. Instead of going, I'm not about to agree with you. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you, but you don't even believe it. If you don't get it, it's going to be a problem. That's people keep growing. I know. I know we can. We're the people who say, you know, if you get, if you come out and you pray for them, you come back six times, you're an unbeliever. What if you're an unbeliever first time? I understand what Willie Brooks is doing, and you know we do that a lot. And I, and I agree with if you came up the first time you were baby, then you got home and something happened, and, and then you started wavering. I mean, you're getting out, you're getting in your belief now. You come back and you get second base. Okay, well that's that's not how we do things. So what if you came up and you were hoping and nothing happened? So these people come all the time. They come up and they come and they come and they come and they come and they come. You came hoping that some that song of dance might come and show you get something done for you, but you're not going to you're not going to you're not going to connect with with your faith. And that's how you get in trouble. Sometimes you want to come pray for them, don't you get them their hands on them too quick because they're not ready and they'll put you further away instead of running away. Which I will close with this story. If you've heard this, the dad in this story. And uh, this, this man uh, had been sick or something for months and then uh, immediately ended up on the sick bed. This man said he was the founder of the Fourth Church of Texas. He came out of the early Pentecostal Bible. And uh, you know, he got healed. Well, about two months later, he, he, he lost his hearing. He lost his dad. And his dad got that later. Found out from teaching his people who never teach it. Found out by teaching in the word, they were able to teach it by getting by, by getting by getting the spirit. So he said, "This man was about to get the spirit from Jesus." She laid hands on him again. He didn't get it. He said, "Well, since the spirit had it, he lost it." Then then Jack Crow was coming in town. I said, "You know, Jack Crow is leaving." Jack Crow don't have it. My sister was sitting there. He lost it. Old Robert was in town. He was old Robert's meeting. He laid hands on him. He didn't get healed. He said, Robert don't have it. Crow don't have it. Now, the priest didn't have it, but he lost it. Brandon came to it. Went to Brandon's meeting. He laid hands on him. Didn't get anything. Brandon don't have it. Robert don't have it. Crow don't have it. The priest had it, but he lost it. Now, you must have all been hearing that. Any one but a hey, he's beating me. He's beating me. He's trying to mention, I'm like, I'm going to be real. Well, I 
I showed up, said, well, you're not. And you need to meet me. And I don't know if you're going to see something. Someone that knew me got talked to me and told my whole story. Well, I'm a, you know, I actually thought they didn't have it. Hayden you know, don't have it. Joe don't have it. Robert don't have it. Brandon don't have it. Late, I mean, you know, well, no. But if you're just married, if you're like, you began to tell me your story. He said, brother, I can help you. He said, the problem is, he said, you got healed the first time on the gift of the Spirit. The second time, God believes the Spirit you have gotten in the Bible of faith and read it and read it for yourself. He began to show him the scripture. He said, I did. I see this right here. And he said, you got healed. Guess it. Amen. Because sometimes we can get things by manifestation of the Spirit. But you've got to get into the Word. You teach those things. You can walk in those things. You maintain those things. I don't know what God healed them. They were people. That's not always true. You know, that dad, he used to say, he used to go and study doctors and teach the scripture. He said that 80% of the people that went near him that weekend, he had lost it during the next year. 80%. And he began to speak to the Lord that way. He said, Why did you? Because it's in there on the gifts and not the words. So I can start having faith seminars in the morning. Start teaching the people more. Like a year ago, so I'm going back to start saying here in an hour or two, and the agents and agents went to teaching them. I said, Leave them. You've got to have the word. Your faith is going to be there. Amen? Hallelujah. We're going to live by faith and not by sight. Isn't that right? That's right. Hallelujah. Well, let's see what happens when we go home. I am sure I probably didn't quote that story perfectly, but that's the essence of it. He tells stories. He quotes stories better than I do. He could tell a story, and in the middle of the story, get into another story, and in the middle of that story, get into another story, and then get into another story, somewhere in the middle of that story, and listen, leave you hanging and come back the next day in class and pick up down there in the middle of all those embedded story statements. Like a, like a better gift statement. <laughs> a little programming language there. And close each week back up to the top and get back to the main story and go, so you thought if I got about the woman over here. Well, I did not have one of your listening. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we bless the people that are tired of giving in the name of Jesus. Abundant blessings be upon them according to the word of God. In Jesus' name.